Okay, so welcome everyone to this webinar about uh, how you can automate PHP performance testing with Blackfire. I'm very happy to be with you today. Um, so let's start uh, now. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is how users um, behave on a website. Uh, that's the maximum number of seconds people are able to wait on a website uh, before going away. And most of the time, that's forever, which means that if your websites are not fast enough, you're going to lose customers uh, uh, and also revenue if you are an e-commerce website, of course. And that's why performance optimization is key to success. So the faster your website is, the better it is for the revenue. So the question is, how do you make sure that the new version of your web app will not be slower or can hide, you can make it faster than the existing one. And the problem nowadays is that this is very difficult to achieve because developers do not have the right tools. And that's one of the goal with Blackfire, giving you all the tools you need to actually be sure that the next version of your web apps is going to be faster than the current one. Why is it so important? That's very important because solving a performance issue in development is quite cheap, right? Nothing is in production yet, so it is very easy to change the code to fix issues. No brainer, really. But then, if you find a, a, a performance problem uh, in the staging environment or in the testing environment, it costs a bit more. And of course, if you find a problem once it reaches production, it costs a lot, right? Because you have deployed the application, which means that you need to understand the problem in production. You need to quickly find a fix, uh, which is not always easy. Then you need to deploy again. So it can take a lot, a lot of time, a lot of stress for developers. Um, so if you can find a way to fix performance problems before the code goes to production, that's better, and that's why uh, we decided to work on Blackfire and start working on Blackfire a year ago. So Blackfire, of course, is um, one solution that you can use uh, for performance testing. Um, this is a solution that can be used by developers, but also DevOps. And Blackfire is easy to measure, understand, compare, and improve uh, code's performance. Moreover, um, Blackfire apps uh, to improve application performance at each step of uh, uh, the application lifecycle, right? So you can use Blackfire in your development environment. So we have a profiler that you can use to debug performance problem, um, to find bottlenecks uh, um, as well in development environments. And then we also have, and we're going to talk about that today, uh, you can write uh, performance tests with Blackfire so that you can integrate Blackfire into your uh, continuous integration um, platform um, so that you can test the performance of your apps, that you can validate the performance is good enough so that you can decide to actually deploy the code in production. And of course, it's also very important to um, have Blackfire in production as well because the traffic is not the same, uh, the servers are not the same, the data are not the same, which means that the performance can be slightly different and the code behavior can be very different from what you can get on your development machines. So Black Farm production is a great way to monitor um, uh, issues, to identify problems, and to understand what's going on. Okay, um, and that's... Uh, so when we started Blackfire a year and a half ago, we only had the development story, right? So Blackfire was mainly um, a profiler, uh, mainly useful for developers on their personal laptops. Version 2, released a month ago, uh, goes uh, further than that, and now we have a solution that you can use in all your environments, development, testing, staging, and production. So. And that's possible because you can write performance tests, assertion on performance metrics. Really. Of course, 
everything relies on the profiler behind the scene, but here, because we have a deep understanding on your code and behavior at runtime, we know which library you are using, if you're using Symfony or Gento or Drupal or plain PHP, PDO, whatever you're using, we know that because we have all the function calls uh, uh, called in your uh, uh, code. So, the first step is the code. Uh, that's why you need to install a small PHP extension on your servers, and that's the only thing that you need to do to be able to write performance tests. And then, we can write things that you can see on the screen. So, for instance, I can say, I don't want the warp clock time, so the time it takes for PHP to actually render a page. Uh, I don't want this time to be more than 300 milliseconds, for instance. Or I don't want the, the network out so that the response size to be more than half a megabyte. Things like that. So, test on time, on um, network, uh, memory, so all the main dimensions of a profile. Uh, but also on very specific things that are uh, the behavior of uh, the website itself. So, for instance, if you have a look at the right side of the slide, right in the middle, you can see that I have an assertion trying to check the number of SQL queries executed for uh, this page. And you can see that I don't want more than five uh, such queries on a page. Uh, and as you can see here on the page, uh, I have all um, assertions, uh, all assertions actually passed. Uh, they are green, and you can see the actual numbers in gray. So, for instance, here I have three SQL queries for this page, and the load number is five, so that's fine. So, that's one way to have a look at the performance of your website uh, for any given page, for any given HTTP um, call. You can write test uh, depending on which library you are using. So. You can write assertions on SQL statements. You can write assertions on the number of templates uh, rendered by PHP or whether uh, there is an email sent synchronously, which is not a good idea in, in production, of course, or the number of sub-processes executed or the number of HTTP requests. Uh, we have a large number of metrics that you can use in your assertions. Uh, so those, are search, those variables are built in. You don't need to do anything to uh, have access to them. But of course, <coughs> sorry. But of course, if you have some specific uh, frameworks, uh, not open sourced ones, uh, or if we missed one for um, the library that you are using, you can also write your own variables based on your own usage, and then use those variables in your test as well. Okay, so that's the first step. Um, and the way you can write those tests is uh, just by creating a small .blackfire.yml file directly in your uh, repository so that the performance tests are actually near uh, the code, which means that whenever you are adding um, a new feature or whenever you fix a performance bug, you can also write some assertions to be sure that you won't have any regressions. Uh, and, and, and the fact that we store uh, the blackfire.html file directly in your repository means that you can have different versions depending on the pull request and different branches. Uh, so you can have one blackfire.html file for your uh, current ver version deployed in production, but a different one for uh, the next version, for instance. The way it works is that when you deploy your code, you also deploy the .blackfire.yml file, and then whenever uh, there is a profile, we're going to talk about automation of profiling uh, later on, but whenever you trigger a profile, we're going to get the .blackfire.yml file on your server, and then execute all the assertions, all the tests that are... Okay. So, um, assertions is a great way to uh, be sure that you don't have any performance regression, but that's also a great way to set expectations on uh, what you expect um, on your website. So, you can say for all the web pages, I don't want any web page to take more than 100 milliseconds to, to be rendered uh, by PHP. So, the performance test that you can write can be on specific HTTP request or for all HTTP requests. So you can set your own expectations for uh, other libraries that you are using on your website. So 
being able to um, get a sense of the performance of one HTTP request is great, but then it's also a great, great if you can, um, and that's possible with Blackfair, uh, the fact that you can um, see the evolution of the performance from one version to the next one, or from the performance of the master branch um, to the performance of a pull request where you add a lot of features uh, and probably impact the performance of your um, app. So the way we can do that is with specific uh, functions and you can see that uh, under the pages should not become slower uh, part of the screen um, where we assert on the evolution of the performance. So here the first one um, says that we don't want the newest version of the code to be uh, slower by 30% uh, compared to the current version. And the same goes for any variable. So we can also say that I don't want to have more than two additional queries, uh, SQL queries, for the newest version of the website compared to the old one. And that's great because, you know, sometimes um, you add a new feature and the performance um, decrease is not that big. But then you add another one, you have a small decrease again, and then another one, a small decrease again, which means that if you don't care, take care of uh, the evolution of performance, at some point you can have big differences uh, you are in production and then it's much more complex to um, debug and to fix that. So uh, if you can uh, find those problems before merging a pull request, for instance, or even before um, the testing or staging environment, that's much better. Okay, so those performance tests are executed whenever you profile an HTTP request from the browser, from the, the console as well. But of course, uh, being able to automate that is the next step. And that's uh, probably what you want to uh, on production servers. For that, we have test uh, scenarios. So a scenario is uh, a set of pages, a set of HTTP requests. I'm talking about pages here, uh, but uh, I think it's better to talk about HTTP requests because Blackfair can be used for a website, but also for web services, APIs uh, for mobile apps and, and things like that. So for a scenario is really uh, a chain of um, HTTP requests that you want to test uh, from time to time or um, uh, based on some events, right? So for instance, whenever you deploy a new version of the code on production servers, you want to trigger a set of scenarios to be sure that the performance is stable enough. And the same goes for uh, the continuous integration servers. So whenever you push a new pull request on your Jenkins servers, you want to run all the scenarios to be sure that performance is um, fast enough. And then, depending on uh, the results of the profiles, you have a report. That's what you see on the screen, on the right uh, side of the screen. Uh, the report tells you for each scenario, all um, um, the results for assertions, so you can see green ones and red ones, and then if you have some red flags, you can have access to the profile to um, on why things are getting slower, for instance. Um, okay, so whenever you uh, deploy, uh, you can trigger that. Uh, we have a very simple mechanism to do that. We have a webhook that you can configure, so that's just a small um, HTTP uh, post that you uh, trigger on our server. I'm going to demonstrate that um, later on um, so that you can understand how it works. Uh, you can also have uh, scheduled builds, which means that every hour or every day, whatever, that's a configuration uh, that you can set. Uh, you can trigger other scenarios and then have uh, some uh, notifications. So we have a bunch of notifiers, uh, so you can have a notification by email if uh, something is getting slower, uh, on Slack, um, or even uh, we also have an integration with uh, GitHub, for instance. So you can integrate Blackfire and GitHub with the scenarios so that whenever um, the scenarios are read, you have a red status uh, on GitHub for uh, the pull request, which is a great way to be sure that you never merge a pull request before performance is um, good enough. 
Okay, so that's the uh, new things that we have uh, in version two of Blackfire. But of course, when you have a performance problem, you need to understand how you can fix it, right? Um, if something is getting slower, if you have many SQL statements executed on a page or many web services calls, you need to understand the problems, uh, which means that then you need to dig deeper, and that's uh, when you need to have a look at the call graphs, right? So that's the profiler part of uh, Blackfire. So the call graph is a great way to understand uh, exactly why um, your test uh, failed. Um, so the, the, the toolbar at the top of the screen is about the main numbers, uh, so the work lock time, uh, the I.O., uh, the CPU time, the memory, the network, uh, and so on. And then the call graph is a representation of the execution of your code, so that's all the function calls. Um, and on the left side, you have all the functions that were called during um, your um, HTTP request. And that's a great way to um, better understand what's going on. So the way we can do that is on the call graph, for instance. So if you have a look at the red nodes, that's the one you want to have a look at first, because uh, those nodes are the ones um, that actually consumed most of the resources. So it can be uh, the memory or uh, the network. Um, the workload time, depending on the dimension you are uh, working on. And then you have also the critical path, which is where your application is spending um, most of the time. So that's probably where you can also have a look at um, all those nodes to see where you can uh, improve things. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about how you can read uh, and interpret uh, a call graph. Uh, it would take too much time. Um, but you can have a look at the 24 days of Blackfire data tutorial that we published um, during December last year, uh, where we explain in great details how you can read such a call graph and how you can interpret the results and how you can then use um, uh, this knowledge to actually fix uh, bottlenecks. Okay, so having a look at one call graph is a great way to find bottlenecks and trying to fix the problems. But of course, uh, when you change the code um, and expect a better performance, you need to check that you actually fix the problems. Important because sometimes uh, we think that we actually fix the problem, but there is a regression somewhere else. So if, we, if you do not check that you actually fix the problems, well, that's not, that's not um, how it works. So the thing is, after uh, fixing the problem, you can take another profile and compare. And that's a unique feature of Blackfire, being able to compare two different profiles, really understand uh, um, if your fix actually fixed the problems, right? So here on the screen, as you can see, the UI is almost the same. Uh, but now we are having a look at the difference between two different profiles, two different versions of the code and the performance of each um, of the ones. So you can see here that the page is actually slower. Uh, we have a lot of red, so red means slower, blue means faster. Um, and then again, uh, in the function list, you can see um, the function calls that were uh, executed more. So the get, works, get words function here was called uh, much more in the newest version of the code. So there is a regression somewhere, and we need to find a way to actually fix that. Um, okay. So um, if you have any questions anytime, please ask the questions. Um, I'm going to answer them at the end of uh, the presentations. Feel free to ask any questions, really. So we have several versions of Blackfire. Um, there is a free version, which is basically a uh, profiler tool. So if you are a user of Exit Pro, for instance, or Xdebug uh, for uh, the profiling part of, of Blackfire, of uh, Xdebug, uh, sorry. Uh, Blackfire is a replacement for those tools. Uh, the big advantage of Blackfire is that uh, configuration is much easier, installation is much easier than those tools. We provide a lot of integration with a lot of different tools. Um, 
The other difference is that we have support for many different PHP versions for from 5.3 to 5.6, and we also have a support for PHP 7. Um, it's not available right now, but we are going to announce that uh, probably early next week. So that's also so that's the first profiler available for PHP 7, which is great. And last but not the least, uh, Blackfire. Uh, does not have any overhead when you are not prof profiling uh, HTTP request, which means that you can deploy Blackfire on production servers with confidence because there is no overhead, so there is no impact on the performance um, on your users and the regular ones, right? But of course, whenever you take a profile, whenever you run performance tests, then we add an overhead, but that's not something that we had uh, on user requests, but on specific requests for tests. Then, all the features um, related to um, um, uh, collaborations, uh, team management, environments, and automations are part of our paid uh, plan, so we have a premium edition and an enterprise one, um, so you can have a look um, online on, on the pricing page and we have um, a lot of information about details on the differences between the plans. But we have a free plan uh, and that's great for um, your development environments and on your personal laptop to be able to uh, find bottlenecks. Okay, I think it's time for a small demo. Uh, now I'm going to switch to uh, my browser. Um, okay, let's go. So this is uh, the Blackfire, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this is the dashboard where I can have a look at uh, all the main information uh, for my account. Here you can see all the latest profiles I've made, uh, some on symphony.com, and here another website on the Gitlist demo. Um, so that's where we store all your profiles, and that's also a big difference with uh, existing tools. We store all the profiles for you, we keep them around so that even if you deploy only um, every two months, for instance, you can keep uh, the profiles of the current version of your website uh, so that you can compare them later on. So that's a very important uh, feature of Blackfire. Um, and then on the, the left side, I have the environments. So the env an environment is um, where I can collaborate with people on a specific website, a specific project. Really. So I have one for Blackfire, I have one for uh, Sensor Labs Insight here, for my, my open source uh, projects, uh, for Sensor Labs and Symphony.com. So you organize your environments the way you want. Um, okay. So I'm going to demonstrate how to work uh, with Blackfair with Gitlist. Gitlist is a PHP open source uh, project. Um, it lets you uh, browse uh, Git repositories. So this is uh, the Twig one here, uh, basic interface here. The first way you can use Blackfair to profile an app is using by uh, using the uh, Chrome extension. So I've installed the, the Blackfair Chrome extension here. Um, and just click on profile. That's it, right? Just by clicking on profile, I'm going to ask Blackfair to take a profile of the current page uh, in the browser. Um, as you can see, it takes some time because we are uh, we are we, we we actually uh, take several samples uh, so that we can get more accurate results. Um, and that's also a key feature of Blackfire. Uh, if you take only one sample one request, if you instrument just one request, uh, you have you can have very different results um, uh, from two runs, even if the code is exactly the same. So being able to take several uh, profiles for the same page, then aggregate the results, you get more accurate results, and it's much easier to reason about the numbers. So here, um, directly in the browser, you have a summary. All right, so I can see uh, the world clock time, uh, the CPU time, the memory, the network, HTTP request, so web service calls or API calls, and SQL statements. You can see I have a red flag here, a red cross, uh, because, as I said before, 
all the assertions are also run whenever you uh, ask for a profile. And here you can see that I have two checks that are um, that fail actually. Then, if I want to get more information, I can click on view profile, and um, and now I'm, I'm I have the call graph here, um, and a big difference with XHProf is that this is um, an interactive call graph, and that works with uh, very big apps with thousands of calls as well. It works really well, which is not the case uh, with XHProf. And then immediately I can see that I have a problem here, right? The big red uh, node, stream select. Stream select is a PHP function, so I can't optimize that, so I can move on or move up here, I can see this is uh, the process component from Symfony, so I can't optimize that, so I can have a look above, and then at some point, I can see here, Gitter client get version, that's from my code. And I can see that the get version is called 10 times, and that's probably too much, right? The version is not going, uh, the git client version is not going to change um, within one HTTP version, so we can probably cache this and avoid all those calls uh, to the sub-processes, right? So I'm not going to uh, write the patch, but let's say that I have the patch available, uh, and this URL is actually uh, the same git list um, code with the patch applied, right? So now I'm going to take another profile, um, again, so that I can actually compare uh, the performance of uh, the master branch and uh, the newest version with uh, the patch applied. As you can see, we can see that the code is actually the code is actually faster. If we click on the view profile, uh, we will see uh, something a bit different, probably. But that's not really easy to understand if the code is actually faster or slower, right? So that's why the best way is to actually compare two different profiles that by uh, going back to dashboard and then compare uh, the first one with the second one, for instance. Um, and as you can see, it, it is actually much faster, 30% uh, faster, which is great. And here you can see where we actually um, uh, were able to um, increase the performance of the code. And stream select is exactly what uh, we expect it, so that's great. There is another way to do that is, uh, and that's um, with uh, what we call reference profiles. Right. So what you can say is here, I want to create a new reference because that's the baseline, so I want to keep this profile around for a longer period of time. You can give it a name, for instance, twig, um, twig um, uh, page, whatever. Then when you want to uh, compare the new version, you can just select this reference that we've just created and click on profile. And now Blackfire, uh, Blackfire knows that you want to compare the reference one to the new one. And uh, immediately you have access to uh, the comparison numbers. And if you click on your comparisons, uh, comparison, then you have uh, directly the comparison between uh, the two versions of the code. So that's very useful. Okay, so here I'm demonstrating how to use Blackfair from um, the browser, but of course you can do that from the console as well. So we have, I'm not going to do uh, a lot here, but just a quick overview. Uh, so we have a Blackfair command line uh, that you can use to um, profile any HTTP request, so you can uh, do the, the exact same thing. So here I'm going to profile the exact same uh, URL like this, black pair curl, and it's going to do the exact same thing, but from the command line. So that's a great way to profile AJAX requests, API calls, web services, uh, uh, things like that. As you can see, I also have a summary, the assertions, and the main numbers, and a link to uh, the profile here. And that's also a great way to run uh, and to profile command line tools. So um, here I'm going to profile an hello world um, like this. 
So any PHP script can be uh, provided from the command line. So that's also true for demons, for consumers. So any PHP code uh, can be provided with uh, the command line interface. OK. Um, so um, now, everything I've talked about right now um, uh, in the demonstration is um, things that you can do on your development laptop, right? Um, <clears throat> so here, uh, oh, I, I forgot to mention something. Here, when you are uh, on a profile, you also have access to assertions, right? So I have a .blackfair.tml file uh, in my project. So you can see here um, num the numbers uh, and the assertions, and some are red, some are, are green. Um, and if you have a look also at the new one uh, after the fix, um, let's do that very quickly. Um, this one, okay, I don't have the assertions there. Okay, anyway, um, okay, so this, those assertions, as I said before, can be run whenever you want, and you probably want to automate that. So that's that's great that they are actually run whenever you take a profile, but you want to automate that. So if you want to automate that in the testing environment, so uh, on Jenkins, you can use a webhook. So we have a lot of different triggers. Uh, so here I'm going to go to the settings for uh, the Blackfell demo team, and I have some triggers. So the first one I want to talk about is the webhook. And the webhook is just a call to uh, a URL here on our uh, platform. Um, <clears throat> and there are a bunch of uh, things that you can um, that you can configure here. Um, so you can give a title, um, some configuration. I'm going to talk about external IDs afterwards. And then whenever you want to trigger a profile, you just uh, use this. Um, HTTP call. So here I can simulate that with the trigger uh, button here, which is doing the exact same thing as the curl post um, I've just mentioned. So it's going to take some time because, uh, of course, Blackfair needs to uh, call all those pages, uh, take several samples, aggregate results, run all the assertions. So it's going to take perhaps a minute or two to finish. No, nope, was quite fast. And then you have the report, right? If I have uh, a notifier configured, I, I could have had a, an email or uh, a notification on Slack um, or things like that, right? And then if I want to understand why uh, this one is, is too slow, then I can click on Show Profile and I have access to uh, uh, the call graph and functions uh, and so on. So as I said, so that's that's right. If you want to integrate Blackfair into uh, our continuous integration workflow, uh, another trigger that is quite interesting, uh, perhaps more for production, is scheduled build. So I can say I want to run my assertions every hour. Um, this is the endpoint. So that's probably the production uh, URL here, um, and and that's all. Um, and then, of course, if you have scheduled builds, you probably want to have some notifiers. So um, notifiers here. I have uh, Slack and email. Um, so I'm not. Um, so I'm going to uh, switch to another team because I'm not uh, an administrator on this one. Um, so uh, which is a shame, really. Um, Blackfire IO uh, notifiers. Okay. So we have email, GitHub, IpChat, Slack, and Webhook again. So you can also uh, integrate Blackfire into your own. Um, uh, if that makes sense for you. Um, so GitHub, how, how can you do that? So here you um, uh, you reference your GitHub repository. Uh, you give us a token so that we can actually post some uh, statuses on GitHub pull request. And the way it works is that let's go back to the webhook uh, trigger here. Here, when you um, trigger this webhook external ID is for GitHub is actually uh, the the, um, the SHA one of uh, the commit and the 
parent ID is the master branch uh, SHA-1, right? And then Black Pharaoh is going to be able to see if you already have the parent ID, the master branch, and if that's the case, uh, it's going to run uh, the evolution assertion as well. And then, because it knows uh, the SHA-1 of your commit, it is able to actually post a status on your pull request. So that's very easy to achieve. There is another way to do that. Uh, so you can do the webhook with a curl like this, but everything I've just talked about, uh, so everything you can do with the interface and the webhook, you can do the exact same thing with the API. So we have an API. We also have a PHP SDK, and you can use the PHP SDK to actually trigger those uh, webhooks. Uh, and the SDK is also a great way to write um, performance tests directly into your PHP unit test suite. So that's also something that you can do. We have a lot of documentation about that. So um, if you click on docs here, uh, you have access to a documentation, 24 days of Black Ferret. That's the one I've, uh, the tutorial I've talked about before. And then I love to talk uh, a lot of things about integration. So if I click here on PHP unit, um, you will see how you can integrate Black Ferret into uh, PHP unit directly, which is, um, great, uh, a great way to do that, and uh, so you don't need to do that with a .blackfair.html file, you can directly use PHP objects to define your assertions like that, right? And they're going to be um, run in the exact same way as the ones uh, declared in uh, .blackfair.yaml. Of course, those are not going to be uh, run in production, so you need PHP unit integration and uh, the .blackfair.yaml file. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop talking because, you know, I can talk about Black Fair for hours, really. There are so many things, uh, so many features, so many integrations. Um, so hopefully you have a better understanding about how you can integrate Black Fair into your own um, uh, workflow. Um, and I'm going to go back to the keynote. Okay. Um, and... Um, I suggest if you are interested in, in Black Fair, we are adding new features um, every week, really. So, uh, and, and we post a lot of uh, posts on, on our blog, so you can subscribe on, on blog.blackfair.io to get the latest and upcoming features. That where, that's where we're going to be seven support next week. If you want to try the premium edition, you can do so by using the webinar 0116 um, coupon to get one free month um, of Blackfire. Uh, that's a great way to actually test automation, uh, web hooks, integration with PHP unit, and so on. Um, and now, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them. I would be more than happy to answer uh, your questions. Um, so the first question is, is there any integration with Sensor Labs Insights? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we are thinking about that, um, so that's uh, uh, quite difficult to answer because uh, without um, talking about uh, the next features that we are working on, so I'm going to talk a bit about what we are working on right now. So Blackfair right now is a great tool for uh, developers, art call developers really, um, uh, but we are working on trying to give you um, automatic um, rec recommendations, right? Because we know that you are using Doctrine, because we know that we are using Symfony or Magento or Drupal, whatever, um, we can tell you um, how you can optimize the performance of your app very easily. Or for um, common problems, we can probably help you without uh, you having to have a look at at the call graph. So the next version of Blackfire, or version 3, if you want, uh, to call that version 3 of Blackfire is going to be about recommendations so that you won't even have to uh, have a look at the call graph. We will tell you directly that you can optimize the performance by doing this or that. And whenever we will be able to do that, it will be very easy or much easier to integrate Blackfire with uh, Sensor Labs Insight. So to answer the question, yes. So no, there is no integration right now with Sensor Labs Insight but we're going to have uh, one at some point um, later this year, probably. 
Okay. Um, so the next question is about uh, open source libraries using Blackfire to improve the performance of their code. Um, okay. So um, so. As I said before, um, the, the profiler is free, so that's um, why uh, all those tools can use Blackfire. On a side note, if you are um, a developer for an open source project, we also have free surprise editions um, plans for uh, open source uh, projects. So if you want one, uh, just send me an email, fabian at blackfire.io, and I can uh, give you an account if you are, um, you know, a developer for an open source uh, PHP library. Um, <clears throat> so right now, I think there are, most of them are using Blackfire as a profiler. So like you are using uh, ExitProf or XDebug nowadays, uh, they are using Blackfire because it's much more easier to use Blackfire and also because Blackfire give them uh, more insight about how they can optimize their code. Um, they, I don't think they are profiling the, the unit tests. I think they are writing scenarios of usage and they are uh, profiling the typical uh, usages. I can talk for myself. So I've optimized SEMI, uh, which is one of my open source projects, um, which is an API generator. And I've optimized uh, the code uh, a lot uh, just by, by profiling the command line tool. Uh, so it really depends on the libraries uh, we are talking about. Um, I know that um, some of them are, are, are definitely using the, the, the unit test, the vast majority of them. Uh, so it really depends, I think. So the next question is about Docker. Uh, OK, I, I've not talked about Docker. Uh, sorry about that. But we have an integration with Docker. So if you have a look at a documentation installation, uh, you will see that we have a lot of different uh, integration and, and, and lot, a lot of different in, um, instructions depending on how you deploy your code. So we have instruction for Debian, Red Hat, Mac, Windows, FreeBSD, manual installation, so you just download uh, the binaries, platform as a service. And then we also have integration with Docker. So that works uh, really well. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about that because we have uh, full documentation about how you can do that. So uh, just go to uh, the docs and uh, you will see how it's done. Um, I also want to mention that for the enterprise version of uh, Blackfire, we have an on-premise version that works with Docker uh, as well. Uh, so if you, are, uh, if you are a big company, if you don't want uh, to use a SaaS service, we also have an on-premise uh, version. So send me an email if you are interested in that. OK, um, so the next question is about how to profile API calls. So you can profile API calls directly from the command line uh, here. So if I say black file curl, then I have all the curl options, really. So I can say I want to post like this, and then I want to add a header, um, whatever, uh, content type, um, whatever, application JSON, um, and then the URL, uh, which is API dot uh, something. Uh, so that's how you can profile APIs. You can also add assertions on APIs uh, in your .blackfire.yaml file that also works. And if you want to learn more, uh, in the 24 days of Blackfire, there is a chapter on uh, how you can profile APIs. I don't remember which one it is. Um, uh, badum, badum, badum. This one, the A, where we are talking about how you can uh, profile uh, APIs. Um, yeah. OK, uh, the next one is out-of-the-box solution for GitLab CI or multi-runners? Um, not really, uh, not for now, because the webhook, um, I think the webhook is, is uh, universal and it works for um, everyone. Uh, at some point, we might add uh, some uh, out-of-the-box solution for um, popular platforms. 
uh, that's not the case right now. So what we have is we, we do have integration with, uh, but that's a bit different, that's uh, when you deploy on production servers, but we have integration with uh, Puppet, with Chef, um, with um, tools like that, but right now we do not have integration with um, um, continuous integration servers on our platforms, uh, that's not the case. Um, but that's probably also something that can be uh, uh, um, the community, uh, and that's the case for a lot of tools, for instance, the Puppet or Ansible uh, integration are actually done by uh, the community directly. Okay, um, any other questions? I think I've answered most of them. Um, okay. API, oh, okay, there is another one. This one is very interesting. So how can you profile an API call uh, from an API call? So you have an API call, and this API call actually calls some other API. Uh, so you do have uh, uh, some level of information because we give you all the HTTP requests that are called during an HTTP call, which means that on the call graph, here, so here I don't have any uh, any calls, but let's say that this is an API call. I would have um, all the API calls from this one. What we can't do right now is to propagate the fact that you also want to profile those additional HTTP requests, but what you can do is then, if there is one that is really too slow, you can just copy and paste the information there directly on the command line to take a profile of these specific API calls. Uh, 